All right, so I'm just going to throw up maybe a quick video. I don't know. I might ramble for a while. Um, <laughs> uh, this is day four of sitting around not doing anything at USA Truck. I had Saturday off, Sunday off, Monday off, and it's Tuesday. I made my delivery at 6 a.m. Um, I think I got out of there about 6.30. It's now 10.30. Uh, so I've been sitting here at the Flying J truck stop for four hours waiting on a load. Not even really waiting on a load. I'm 90 miles from my house. I'm waiting for them to give me a plan to get to my house uh, for home time. So I've already had three days off this week, not, not including today. I'm not counting today as a day off yet. Um, there's still time that I could get something done today, even though it's, you know, already 1030 in the morning. Um, half the day almost is gone and I don't even have a plan yet. Um, <laughs> but I still am going to have a day and a half to two days off this week. And I've had Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. So if they get me home time right now, I'm going to have five days off in a row. To some people, that sounds pretty awesome. But for, you know, sitting in this truck, like right now, I'm just really bored. Just sitting around waiting. This is not a really enjoyable experience for me. Um, it's really frustrating me that I, I don't make any money if I'm not driving down the road under a load. Well, I make money empty as well. If, if we'll, we'll say instead of under a load, we'll say under a plan. A trip. If I'm not moving down the road under a trip or a plan, um, then I don't make any money. So, just sitting around, not making any money. Um, living in this truck really sucks. So, <laughs> it, it's it, right now it sucks. I'm thinking about going into the Flying J. They should have probably switched over to the lunch menu by now. I wasn't really in the mood for eggs. Um, this Flying J has a Denny's. Um, I don't know if they're open. Um, so, um, what I'm going to try and do the, for about a week is... I am getting really frustrated with messaging and calling all the time to get a load. Um, I have not sent a message and I have not called asking for a load today. And I've been sitting for four hours without any kind of anything. No, no communication at all. Um, so now when I say that for anybody that doesn't work for USA Truck and know how things work around here, I'm going to let you know that I have done what I'm supposed to do. We have a bunch of messages and stuff that we do on the uh, GeoTab, our logging device. So whenever I delivered at the receiver this morning, I set my status as arrived when I got there. And then I sent in a message um, for the trailer and drop info basically the load uh, information uh, that, you know, it's, it's been delivered. And uh, then there's a third status that you set for depart to let them know when you leave the facility. So I did a message saying I arrived. I did a message saying I delivered the load. And then I sent in a message saying that I departed. Now, these are all macros. Um, I did all of those. And I put in a home time request last week. So I have done, like, whenever I say that I'm not messaging or calling, I'm talking about extra stuff, micromanagement type stuff. I've done all of the things I'm supposed to do. It should show in their system that I'm sitting, waiting on a load right now, and I'm due for home time. That was supposed to be on Sunday. It's Tuesday now. 
Uh, I have packages sitting on my porch, hopefully. Um, I don't know when I'm going to be there to pick them up. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really frustrated, but I'm getting tired of messing, you know, basically micromanaging the driver managers and the planners. They, they don't proactively do their job. They're very reactive. Um, I don't know the reason on that. I, I don't know if it's poor, like they don't have adequate tools to let them know like that I'm sitting here waiting on a load or they're lazy, incompetent, uh, overworked. I don't know what the reason is. But I'm going to sit and I'm not going to message them and I'm not going to call them. And I'm going to see what happens. And I'm going to do this for about a week because I'm getting really tired of messaging and calling because the driver managers are constantly bitching about us calling and messaging them. So I'm going to see what happens when I do what they say and don't call and don't message. We'll, we'll see what happens when I stop micromanaging. I've been running quite a few miles every week and that has only been because I call and message all the fucking time and I pester them to get loads. And I'm going to see what happens when I don't do that. I think I'm going to end up running like a thousand miles a week. Because even when I call and message and pester them, it's still, I, I still sit around quite a bit. Like, I can't imagine what it's going to be like without micromanaging them. I'm going to be like, I'm going to have to find some new hobby in this truck. Uh, when I get home, I'm going to have to figure something out because I'm going to be sitting around a lot. Um, I have enough savings that I can sit around a lot. So I'm going to just give it a try for a week. I'm, I, I don't want to. I want to be running hard and making money and adding to my savings so that you know the, the likelihood that I'm going to be successful when I start my own business and lease with USA Truck um, I, I want, I want to, to put myself in the best position to be successful. Uh, so I don't want to sit around, but I'm trying everything I can to keep rolling here at USA truck. And this is just something new that I'm going to try. Um, we'll, we'll see. I don't know if this doesn't work. I'll try something else. So I'm going to give it a try for about a week. This is the first time today, right now, this is the first time that I haven't like called or messaged them once I was uh, empty to try to get a load and we'll see if I get a load we'll see what happens um, so far not so good four hours well it's been over four hours uh, without any response whatsoever I can't believe they, they didn't put a pre-plan on me like, it's just I don't even have words for for it. I just I don't really understand what's going on. They just seem really bad at what they do. So, um, also, like tuition reimbursement, don't count on it here at USA Truck. I've been trying to get tuition reimbursement since I've been here, and it's it's not fucking happening. You know, that's something I could do right now. I'll see if I can get all the tuition reimbursement. Because I've been calling and messaging them. And uh, I've emailed them all of my loan forms. You know, copies of all my loan paperwork. Uh, nothing. Nothing from them. It's just like, it's a, it's a void. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing with getting any kind of uh, um, reimbursements. Um, it took a a lot of work to get reimbursed. I paid a lumper out of pocket because the EFS number that they gave me wasn't valid. Um, and, uh, I got the, the lumpers wanted me out of the dock, uh, really bad because they were really busy. And I just ended up paying out of pocket because it's only $80. They gave me a, a $5 cash discount. So 75 bucks. So I saved the company five bucks. Uh, but it, it was a pain in the ass to get reimbursed for that. I, I think I messaged or called for that reimbursement five or six times 
before my driver manager finally submitted it. And then I didn't get it right away. I got it on the next paycheck. Um, so it took me like two and a half weeks to get reimbursed that $75. Uh, and then, you know, detention pay, breakdown pay, stuff like that. Don't even, it's not happening at USA Truck. It's not happening. It's, <laughs> it's just not fucking happening. Uh, you know what? That's something. Uh, I got into a debate, kind of, with my driver manager about breakdown pay and detention pay and stuff like that and reimbursements because I got really frustrated about it. She told me that it's 24 hours. If I sit here waiting on a load for 24 hours, after 24 hours, I'm supposed to get some form of pay. So <laughs> I'm not going to message them and I'm not going to call them. I've sent in all my macros I'm supposed to send in. If I don't get a load after 24 hours... Uh, whenever they eventually get around to giving me a load, I'm going to remind her of what she said about that uh, layover pay or whatever the hell it's called. Where if I set waiting on a load for more than 24 hours, that uh, I get some kind of compensation. So we'll see. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just... Have you ever gotten so mad about something that you get past mad and you just get to this carefree state where you just, like, I'm, I don't, like, my, my blood isn't pumping, you know, you know, when you get mad, there's, like, physically you get mad, you just, uh, your blood gets rushing, your adrenaline gets up, stuff like that, like, I'm really calm and relaxed right now, I'm, I'm past mad, um, I've been mad for so long that I'm just... I'm just really, really, really disappointed with USA Truck. I wish they had some kind of program where drivers could opt in to pick their own loads off of a load board. This is the main reason that my whole goal of getting back into the industry is to become an owner-operator and work off of a load board because it's been my experience that dispatchers in this industry are really, really, really bad at their jobs. Lazy and incompetent. Those are the two key words that describe almost every dispatcher I've ever dealt with in this industry. Lazy and incompetent. I'm not going to classify Haley as lazy and incompetent. I've been working with her for about a month and uh, she may just be overworked and she may not have the tools necessary to do her job properly. Um, I don't know. I'm not 100% yet. But I just really want to make it through and get to the next step of the process where I can pick off of a damn load board. Because if I, coming back into this industry, one of the main reasons I left the industry was because of dispatchers sitting around like I am right now, uh, getting loads, you know, after, after sitting around, um, for like a day, I would get a load that I didn't pick up for another day. And then I would have like an extra two days on the delivery. So you'd end up there, you know, with what I just did getting paid for 392 miles, 400 miles at 40 cents a mile. What is that? Uh, it's like $160 or something for how many days? Saturday, Sunday, Monday, three and a half days, $160 for three and a half days. Is that minimum wage? I don't think it is. Am I off work sitting in this truck right now? No. If you were like working at say Domino's, but you weren't technically doing anything, but you couldn't leave the store, would you still consider that working? You know, you can go sit in the lobby, watch TV. You can do whatever you want in the store, but you can't leave the store. You're not, they're not paying you to work, but you're just sitting in the store. Is that legal? Are you technically off duty right then? Or, I mean, if, if they won't let you go home and you can't leave the store, are you really off or are you still working? That's kind of the state that I'm in when I'm sitting around waiting on a load or waiting on a pickup or waiting on a delivery is I'm not off work, but I'm not getting paid. I 
I'm still sitting here in this truck away from home in a in a ready state waiting on something so that's 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 what it's like to sit around here at USA truck and not get paid just sitting and waiting and sitting and more sitting and waiting sitting and waiting now you, you could blame the Wuhan virus but this was happening before the Wuhan virus so they're just using that as an excuse now uh, maybe it's a little bit worse with the Wuhan virus but um, the Wuhan virus has nothing to do with me sitting and waiting right now because I'm supposed to be getting home time and I'm 90 miles from my house they could just send me a message and tell me to drive home that's it they could just send me home and I could start my home time instead of sitting at this fucking truck stop waiting on them to get around to me this is just them not getting around to me and I'm going to sit here and see how long it takes for them to realize that they're not doing their jobs so anyway that's the video for the day I think I'm going to throw my shoes on and go see what kind of food the Flying Jays got I hope you're having a better day than me good luck uh, this whole Wuhan virus thing um, I don't know I haven't really been home to associate with anybody so I, I don't know how most people are being impacted the people that I do keep in touch with um, our former co-workers um, they worked at the place I worked at and they're pretty much not impacted by this at all because where I worked at previously I worked from home a lot uh, it was a very like it was an office environment where I had an assigned laptop and stuff like that and I could work from the office or home it didn't matter and uh, so, you know, the whole stay at home thing had almost no impact on their business. And financially, I don't think they've been act impacted at a point right now where they're doing any kind of layoffs yet. So I don't really know anybody that's like was a fast food worker or restaurant worker or I, I can't think of any other businesses that are closed right now. Um seems like everybody else thinks they're essential and they're still going. It seems like just restaurants and bars and stuff are closed. Everybody else has classified themselves as essential. Um, so I, I don't really know anybody that like lost their job over this personally. Um, so it is, I, I hope that if, you know, anybody watching this is one of those people that had their, you know, maybe you're a car salesman or something, and maybe they didn't shut the, the car lot down completely, but they laid off 90% of the salespeople because sales, you know, dropped so low. I don't know. I don't know what all businesses closed, but it seems like most businesses uh, are still operating in some way. But uh, I hope it all works out for you. Um, A lot of people have made tremendous sacrifice so far in this whole Wuhan virus thing. And they're talking right now that they want to restart the economy. Not because that's what we should do, but because they want to. People are tired of whatever. Uh, they want their, the economy is becoming the big issue right now and not the virus. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's a big slap in the face to all of the people who are making such tremendous sacrifice for those people who are going up and protesting the lockdown. I, I don't think that they represent the majority of the people. I I would put the, the people that are protesting. Um, I, I'm not against anti-vaxxers. It's, it's your body. If you don't want to have a vaccine put into it, then... I, I think people should have that choice. I personally don't have a problem with, uh, you know, being vaccinated, but, uh, anti-vaxxers have a very negative reputation. Um, and for some reason, these people who are boycotting and protesting the lockdown, 
they're not put in that same bucket as the anti-vaxxers. It seems to be the same people who hate anti-vaxxers are out there protesting the lockdown. And what they're protesting is basically they're the exact same as anti-vaxxers. This lockdown is our only form of vaccine against this virus. So the people out there protesting right now are anti-vaxxers. That's what they are. Um, I, I don't think we should end the lockdown. I think that we should be following the advice of the medical community, not the financial community on how to deal with this virus. I, I think that the financial community should find out like how to work within the lockdown uh, and the medical community should determine the whether we have a lockdown and, and how exactly we have a lockdown. That's just my opinion. Uh, it doesn't matter much. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, this... I just... It, it seems so selfish for people to get out there and, and ignore the lockdown and, and boycott it and, uh, you know, protest against it and stuff like that when there's so many making such sacrifice they're all behind the scenes. You're not, you don't see those people. You don't see the people like me that, um, are living in a closet and I avoid leaving this closet. I only leave this closet when I absolutely have to, to avoid contact with others. Um, you don't see all the, all those people that are actually following the orders. Um, But you do see the dumbasses out there protesting. Yeah, they're not representative of all of us. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you're having a better day than me. Have a good one.